Just suppose you could travel back in time and experience life as a medieval. Maybe go back to the Middle Ages and live there in England as an adult. Now, I know, I know you're wondering why the hell would I want to do that, but just bear with me, it's quite interesting. How would you survive? What would you eat or where? Where would you work? How would you avoid getting into trouble with the church and the authorities? Let's journey back through time now and experience the past through the eyes of a medieval time traveler. Welcome to Medieval Madness. Rich man, poor man. I'm making the assumption that you wouldn't have been royalty or a noble. I'm assuming that you're not one here in this timeline, and if you are, please get off YouTube and do something more important, so it stands to reason that you wouldn't have been one there either. The likelihood is that you would have been a peasant, as 85% of the population of medieval Europe was. Once you arrived, rocking up at an abbey or priory was a good idea. The monks and nuns would have to take you in and give you food and a bed for the night. And while you're wandering about and deciding where you'd like to live, it's always going to be a good idea to travel with other people. It's safer that way. There are lots of robbers and bandits on the roads of medieval England. Learning to speak the language would be essential. It will sound completely different from the English that you speak here in the 21st century. Everyone in the Middle Ages is expected to work because God has ordained it so, as it's unlikely you are not trained for any of the medieval jobs like tanning, weaving, shoemaking, or smithing, you're probably going to end up in the countryside as an agricultural laborer. One long round of plowing, planting, weeding, and harvesting for lucky old you, then. Trying to be good. In medieval England, the Roman Catholic Church ruled over everything. You will have to make sure that you attend church every Sunday without fail or suffer a fine, and then do absolutely nothing for the rest of the day because it is the Lord's Day and everyone has to rest. Having sex before marriage means, yep, you guessed it, a fine, and when you eventually find a partner, you'll have to ask the Lord of the Manor for permission before getting married, or you'll get a double fine. Although you don't need a church service to get married, a simple exchange of vows is enough, followed by consummation. Now, according to church law, you and your partner can only have sex for procreation, not for enjoyment. So it must be done in the missionary position and after dark because you're not allowed to see one another naked. You can't have sex on fasting days or if your wife is already pregnant. After all, sex is just for making babies, so there is no need to be doing it if you've already made one. You would definitely want to be seen as a good Catholic. Messing about with religion here could get you burned at the stake. It would also be a good idea to learn the Lord's Prayer, the Apostles' Creed, and the Hail Mary in Latin as soon as you can. Does my foot look long in this? In medieval society, clothes say a lot about a person. In the 14th century, King Edward III passed sumptuary laws to stop the riffraff from wearing the same clothing as the nobles. How dare they! So you would need to steer away from clothes made with velvet, silk, or fur, and anything dyed royal blue, purple, or crimson. But as we have decided that you're just a peasant, you can't afford them anyway. Really, the laws are all about keeping the new merchant classes from getting too big for their boots. And that's another thing. Shoes! Ever since King Richard II married Anne of Bohemia, the fashion has been for long, pointed-toed, piked shoes, like the ones that her entourage wear. Edward IV banned cordwainers from making them in the 15th century because they got so long that the ends had to be fastened to the knee with gilded chains to stop men from tripping over them. You should avoid them as well if you don't fancy getting a fine from the local magistrate. As prostitutes are banned from wearing aprons, if you are a man, you will have to make sure that your wife always wears hers as you don't want her to be mistaken for a lady of the night. You want to be seen as respectable people. She will also have to keep her hair covered too. Any woman seen wearing her hair loose is known as a loose woman and shunned by society. As far as personal hygiene goes, you will need to get used to bathing less frequently because it really would be too much like hard work to heat the water one bucket full at a time and empty it all out later. No, bathing was definitely for the wealthy who could afford to pay the bathman 13 pence to fill up the tub on bath night. If you absolutely could not live without your fancy toiletries, you could always visit the apothecary. He could sell you some alum stones that you could wet and wipe under your armpits to use as a deodorant. Don't forget to cut off the crust. Well, for a start, you would have to get used to a completely different diet. 
There are no supermarkets or fast food joints here. Hopefully, you would have a few chickens for eggs and a small garden plot even if you lived in a crowded urban area. That would mean fresh fruit and veg, but as they weren't always in season, you would need to learn how to pickle, salt, and dry food stuff for the winter months. Going foraging is always an option, and it's free. The hedgerows and woods are full of ingredients like berries, wild garlic, and edible flowers. You could cook stinging nettles and eat them like spinach, or use them to dye your linen clothes. Any stems can be stripped, dried, and used as string. You wouldn't ask for the bill when leaving a tavern, you would ask for it when you arrived, and then you would be given the bill of fare, which is what we'd call a menu. Lots of other words have changed in meaning since the Middle Ages too. Nice means fussy, and marvelous means bewildering, so you need to be careful and listen carefully until you get used to the language. And just remember, most importantly from any of this information, do not eat the crust on a pie, if you were ever invited to a fancy banquet, because it's meant just for show and not to be eaten. The crust is made from a half and half mixture of flour and salt, and is used as a receptacle for the filling. Once that's been dished out, then the pastry lid and the crust is thrown away. Somebody get me a doctor. You had better hope that you're fit and well before you set off on your medieval adventure. Medical practices in the Middle Ages left a lot to be desired. Making sure that you're up to date with all of your vaccinations and having a checkup at the dentist is probably a good idea too. If you are unlucky enough to be dropped into 1348, the year of the Black Death, at least you would know that it's better to get out of the crowded, unhygienic, and stinky populated areas to avoid the infection and get away from those fleas. Arriving in the 14th century healthy and well-nourished would also give you a better chance of survival when fending off diseases like typhus, diphtheria, dysentery, smallpox, and leprosy. And this is where I would really struggle, getting used to creepy crawlies is very important. Those bedbugs, fleas, and lice are going to be everywhere, so finding out how to use flowers like fleabane and lavender is going to help. You had also better hope that you don't get seriously injured. There are no antibiotics, and even a small cut could quickly get infected, leading to sepsis and death. There will be parasites to contend with as well, because human waste is used as fertilizer, and roundworm and tapeworm eggs are often passed on as they survive in the soil. Ergo poisoning from mold on crops is another problem to avoid. This causes convulsions, hallucinations, and psychosis. Let's face it, you were stupid enough to go time traveling to the Middle Ages in the first place, so dying in a state of mad hysteria probably isn't going to make much difference. War on War if a Plantagenet king is on the throne, then you can bet that England is at war. It's usually with the French, but sometimes the Welsh and the Scots are challenges too. It's probably best to keep out of it and not get involved if you can. Practicing to shoot the longbow is compulsory for any male between the ages of 12 and 60. Already being an adult means you are at a disadvantage as you haven't had a chance to build up your shooting muscles. I suppose you could join the men at war instead, although you will have to learn to ride. So maybe you could be a foot soldier with a six foot pike and a small shield. If the local lord summons his tenants to serve, you really won't have any choice but to go to war. And if you did survive the violent and bloody battle without being killed, but you were maimed, you would end up begging on the streets because you wouldn't be able to work anymore. Breaking the Law because of the high levels of poverty, theft would be a major problem, but you wouldn't have to worry about pickpockets because pockets haven't even been invented yet. But there are plenty of cut purses about, so just make sure that you keep your purse hidden under your clothes and out of sight. Now, if you were stupid enough to become involved in criminal activity, which wouldn't be a good idea because medieval punishments are grim even for the slightest transgression, but let's just suppose you did and then you were even more stupid and got caught. You could always become an approver and snitch on 10 other men to get yourself a pardon. It didn't really matter whether they were with you when you committed the crime as long as they were tried and condemned in court. It would be a good way for you to get rid of anybody that you didn't really like, like your big-headed brother-in-law or your nosy neighbor. If any of them were acquitted, then you would have to find some others to accuse. There had to be 10 men to take your place or there was no deal. Learning a Latin passage from the Bible off by heart is another way to get yourself out of trouble. Most peasants couldn't read, but men of the cloth could. Trained clerics could read Latin and could only be tried by the church who could not pass a sentence of death even for murder. So being able to pass yourself off as a member of the clergy by reading the Bible will likely get you off the hook. 
It's always the same passage that is required, the first verse of Psalm 51. O oh, loving God, have mercy, have pity upon my transgression. Being able to read this has saved so many men from hanging that it's known as the neck verse. So, being a traveler in time to the Middle Ages, you need to get used to the dirt, the stench, the parasites, the disease, the enforced religion, the backbreaking work, and the never ending wars. Or just give it a miss and subscribe to our channel. Thank you ever so much for watching, I hope you all have an amazing week, and I'll see you next Friday for another video. Cheers!